We have a great team in research and development, and that, that's one of the things, I, I guess, when I think about what I'm passionate about or what really energizes me when I go to work is, is the people. We have really bright, young engineers who just see the whole world as a blank piece of paper and can imagine anything. We have more seasoned leaders who are technology experts that are known throughout the world in their fields. When I was growing up, science was one thing that I was really good at. I could do science, I could do academics, and so that became my thing, and it, it became something that I really enjoyed doing. Early on, my dad figured out that I was mechanical, so he would ask me to do all these things that a seven, eight, 10, 11 year old should not be doing. Uh, he would have me fix the plumbing. I remember one time he came out and he said, hey son, the cruise control is not working on the car and I need you to go out there and fix it. So me being 11, 12 years old, I didn't know I couldn't do it. And I went out there and I troubled, shot what was going on. I figured it out. I was born in Taiwan. That's the southeast corner of mainland China. It's a small island, beautiful island. And uh, Taiwan at that time is not the most developed country. And so today is much different. So uh, my parents struggled to provide for us. So I grew up not with everything material-wise, uh, in a sense that uh, we mainly tried to make a living on a daily basis. I grew up in Jamaica, uh, so the island in the sun, sunshine and, and sugarcane and, and, and what have you. And I grew up playing sports. I enjoyed learning, enjoyed school. And, and science, uh, I, I think, was a great match for me from this vantage point. I, I was quite curious, so I would ask why and how. And I think science allowed me to do that exploration. Growing up, my dad was my mentor for sure. And he was someone who was fascinated with science, uh, particularly astronomy. And the other thing about my dad is he always challenged me to look for the real story. So to challenge the common wisdom, the common narrative, and I still do that today. We really look at any high potential options that exist out there in advanced nuclear space. Um, but because, you know, you're talking about nuclear, you're talking about a huge resource that you need in terms of funding and people and expertise. That means we've really kind of down-selected and focused a lot of our resource at Southern Company on one specific technology that TerraPower's working on, which is in a class of reactors called the Molten Salt Reactor. So Southern Company's role in this overarching R&D landscape, I mean, we're basically the last utility R&D group standing. We can play a major role in this space if we want to. We just have to choose to. With the, the government need or U.S. need to tackle the carbon emission, the Department of Energy established National Carbon Capture Center, which with the focus on developing technologies that can help capturing CO2 from a fossil-based power generation from gas. My job there is to seek out the technologies, and once we identify the technologies, we'll bring the technology to our location and run through a test program. I work in the power delivery space, the so transmission and distribution, and I work on things like situational awareness, really um, taking data and information and extracting from that some sense of what's going on on, on on the grid and coming up with mitigating strategies, working on things like uh, better tools for system operators, looking at integrating renewables into the grid, all of these wonderful things. One of the things that really excites me at the moment about our current work is our work in connected communities. Uh, and this work is really trying to imagine what a uh, community will look like in a net zero future. Really healthy indoor air quality, very comfortable. The buildings used to support the grid and allow us to have more and more renewable generation uh, on the grid. Southern Company is really a trailblazer in this effort. And of course, you couple that with the other projects that we have, smart home projects within the Southern Company system, and, and you really start to build a, a large portfolio of that future of living. You build that portfolio through the different data points, through the different project concepts that we've had. And then we share that with the industry to help improve 
uh, the way we use energy at the home, possibly the way we use our time and resources at home to be even more efficient inside of our homes itself. I get excited about the possibilities of R&D and the possibilities of science and technology to broadly improve the world. So I see a future in which hydrogen enables the things that result in energy equity for all customers. And hydrogen becomes a low cost solution um, to provide clean energy. So it's going to be clean and it's going to be reliable and it's going to be affordable. And I think those are really important things as we try to serve all of our customers. I'm excited to continue working on renewable energy and energy storage. I think as we build out more and more of those technologies, we're going to continue to have really interesting uh, research problems to solve. I'm really excited to see uh, wind in the southeast. I think it's going to be a big, um, a big game changer. I'm excited about the future of hybrid facilities, solar plus storage, wind plus storage, and I think we're gonna have a lot of exciting work to do when those technologies really come about in large scales. Southern Company Gas is making tremendous investment in research and development. One main area of focus today is the LCRI initiative, and that is the Low Carbon Resource Initiative. And that's where we're really focusing on bringing new and, and developing fuels onto our system. One of the primary cornerstones of that is hydrogen development. There is certainly a play for hydrogen in the power sector, but then there's also a play for hydrogen within the natural gas sector. When I think about the people in research and development, the first word that comes to mind is passion. So when you talk to the individuals, they tell you what they do, and if you focus on that, you're missing the bigger picture. Because when you ask one of the researchers, hey, tell me what you're working on, immediately you will see their eyes light up, and you will not just get the information you will actually feel the passion that they have for the job that they are, are doing. And that is probably the most rewarding part of my job is working with the people and helping them realize their dreams in making our company better, our communities better, and our country better.